Enersys. Powerful solutions for a world that never stops. So this, this is a snapshot of the, of the, uh, of the market for uh, batteries, and really the area to focus on is over here, these areas of industrial batteries. So if you look, you know, here's the lead acid battery market, roughly two gigawatt hours, I'm sorry, four gigawatt hours of, of capacity, and here's, here's forklift right in here, this small little orange bar. So there's a few early adopters out there uh, looking at the technology evaluating the technology today. And you say, why, why would I consider using, using a lithium-ion battery? What are the things that people tell you when they come in and talk about lithium-ion batteries? They tell you you're going to reduce or eliminate maintenance. You're going to reduce or eliminate battery change-outs. You have higher energy density because it's a smaller, lighter battery, uh, higher cycle life, um, a flatter uh, voltage profile when, when the battery's on load reduce recharge time and, and environmentally friendly. These are the typical things that we see as selling features of lithium-ion batteries in the marketplace. And uh, keep your mind on that environmentally friendly one. We'll come back to that a little bit later. So what does this mean for me in an electric forklift truck application? Um, it's lighter, it's smaller, so you might be able to get a tighter turning radius, a smaller profile. Uh, on your system, but remember we have to have counterweight and things like that, uh, so we have to deal with that. Two to three thousand cycles before replacement, so it's a long cycle life uh, product. Uh, no gas emissions, clean air, no maintenance required. Uh, very high charge rate, so you can do fast charge, opportunity charge with the technology. Um, and you can operate in a partial state of charge environment and it's really encouraged for um, long cycle life. And another thing about the technology is you generally get about the same amount of capacity out of the battery at different rates. So if you're running at a five hour rate or a one hour rate, you can still get the same number of amper hours. Whereas in a lead battery, as you go down in shorter run times, you lose some of the uh, capacity. It doesn't deliver the same amount of capacity. So, but on the other hand, then there's a lot, of, a lot of challenges and potential issues with adopting a new technology. A lot of folks are working on, you know, trying to overcome these. You know, there's, it's an early stage product in this application. So there's not a lot of experience. So folks are out there trialing things and gathering data to see how the batteries uh, operate. We got a lot of different competing chemistries in lithium ion. Uh, there's all the different cobalt technologies, lithium cobalt oxide, nickel manganese cobalt, uh, nickel cobalt aluminum, uh, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, lithium iron phosphate is a technology that's predominantly been introduced into the uh, electric forklift market. we got a question is what's the technology tomorrow? How fast is it going to change? Is the battery that I buy today going to be available you know, tomorrow or next year uh, as, a, as a replacement? We also have to deal with, you know, initial system costs. The batteries are typically three to four times more expensive than lead acid batteries. Costs have come down uh, over time as the product uh, matures, uh, but you know, it's going to be a, it's a big, big challenge for lithium ion to get down to the actual one-to-one uh, -one cost ratio with with lead acid, and it'll be very difficult to actually get there um, at the end of the day. The other thing, uh, lithium ion batteries, they have this thing called capacity fade. So as, as you use the batteries or as the battery ages, the capacity, available capacity comes down. Whereas lead batteries typically, they have a capacity and they run, run that way until they get to the end of the life. So you have to take that into account when you're planning for your operations and your battery size. You also have to make, have a battery management system with all lithium ion batteries uh, for safety to actually operate the, the cells uh, in a safe, reliable uh, environment. So that introduces a lot more complexity uh, to the system and other potential failure areas. So a lot of work uh, has been done and is being done in, in battery management systems to uh, operate the batteries in the types of environments that you see in the various applications in the, in the marketplace. Um, it's really an area that has, you know, need, needs a lot of focus to make sure that the uh, batteries operate well and, and operate safely. 
you know, fast charge is uh, certainly a, you know, a great opportunity, um, you know, charging up to uh, 1C rates, um, but then it also implies a larger charger. So, you know, you have to think about your infrastructure and, and do you have to change things to actually be able to utilize the advantages of the lithium ion battery. We still have a lot of shipping restrictions. Uh, it's very difficult to ship by air right now, but even with uh, over the road transportation, um, you have to ship them as uh, hazardous material. The, the, the end of life, I, I mentioned you know, environmentally friendly earlier, but at the end of life, there's really no intrinsic value left in the lithium ion cell. Um, there, in the cobalt technologies, you know, you've got the rare earth metals in there, so there is some effort to go to try to retrieve them, but most of the, most of the materials that are used in the, in the batteries uh, really have no uh, re value from a recycling standpoint. So today, most of them are either incinerated uh, or presented to landfills. There's a little bit of recycling that's happening in the marketplace, but uh, it's got a long way to go. And the last bullet on there is uh, regulations and standards. So, you know, lead-acid batteries are well-documented uh, regulations and standards. Lithium-ion batteries are really just starting to see some of the different standards and regulations come in play uh, for the material handling applications. So I mentioned, you know, environmentally friendly. This is just some comparisons of lithium-ion and lead-acid batteries in terms of their sustainability and the recyclability. The lithium ion batteries, you know, today if you show up at a, a smelter um, or a reclamation center, and there are a few of them in the country, uh, you're going to be paying money to actually have them take those batteries off your hands. They have to disassemble them and dispose of, of several of the items. And if it is a cobalt technology, they might try to go in there and retain, uh, reclaim some of the cobalt uh, as a rare earth element because uh, there is value there. But there really is no established recycling stream out there like there is with lead acid batteries and it's a pretty extensive process to try to recover them uh, today. There's a lot of work going on uh, in the in industry to you know, try to address this. It's going to take some time uh, to get there but it's just, it's just one of the things that's not there yet. Um, whereas contrasting with a lead acid battery, you know, a lead acid battery is a fully closed loop recycling system. There's intrinsic value with lead acid batteries at their end of life. You can recover and reuse all the lead, um, the plastics, and the, uh, and the sulfuric acid. Lead acid has the highest recycling rate of any consumer product. Over 99% of lead acid batteries are recycled. Paper doesn't meet it, uh, meet, do as well as, as lead, uh, aluminum cans, glass, you know, all the stuff that we put in our recycling bins, you know, and, and send down to the curb. Um, even with all the, the effort that's been done there over the years, uh, those are only 40, 50 percent to 60 percent type of recycled uh, consumer products. You know, lead, lead has a great story in terms of its sustainability. So the lead that we use in batteries today could have been mined, you know, 50 to 100 years ago, and it'll be there, you know, forever as we continue to reclaim and reuse and build new lead acid batteries. So let me switch over now for a few minutes and talk about the thin plate pure lead technology. We're featuring that over in the other, other area of the booth. You can take some time and look at the products. Uh, over there, but thin plate pure lead. It's a technology that's been in the company for over 20 years now. Um, it's a very robust technology that we use in many other applications. We've recently uh, enhanced some of the uh, features and have introduced it into the material handling applications. So thin plate pure lead batteries are now available as an alternative to traditional conventional flooded lead acid batteries. The thin plates give us a much larger surface area, so we get more energy and we can get more power in the box. We have a very low corrosion rate with pure lead, so that's what gives us the ability to use thin plates and still get good life. And finally, the plates are held in a nice tight compression, so it, it's a good, inherently it's a good design for vibration and shock type applications that we see in uh, forklift trucks. So 
think back to some of the things I said earlier about lithium ion and why you would choose a lithium ion, and then let's look at this list here, because many of the boxes that you check for lithium ion, we can check those same boxes with thin plate pure lead and, and gain several of the advantages uh, over flooded batteries that lithium ion uh, pretends, portends to, uh, to have. So you've got, uh, we've got a higher um, on-load uh, uh, voltage with the, th with the thin plate pure lead technology. If I take two of the same battery capacities, a flooded battery and a thin plate pure lead battery and discharge them at the same rate, we'd see a higher voltage profile on the thin plate pure lead. So we can deliver more energy in a given amper hour size. Um, because we can do things like fast charge, we can, reduce, we can reduce the recharge time. We can charge these batteries up to 0.7C, whereas typical flooded batteries only charge at about 0.2C. So we can get fast charge, opportunity charge, and be able to use those batteries for multiple shifts without having to do changeouts. We have no maintenance uh, required, no watering. The battery is completely sealed and valve regulated. So the recombination of the uh, gases that are generated in the cell uh, stay in the cell. The liquid stays in the cell. Great high rate performance because we have all those plates in the cell. We can get a lot of power out in a short period of time or accept a lot of power in from regenerative braking. Uh, and from lifts coming down. Um, good cycling performance, better than traditional eight, uh, absorbent glass mat batteries. And, and really when you look at it, you can really think of it as a great bridge technology over to lithium ion. So lithium ion has some things it needs to continue to work on um, in the areas of cost, uh, safety, recyclability, and sustainability. Uh, and as those things continue to be worked on over the years, um, we have a bridge, you know, to that with the uh, thin plate pure lead. I have a picture in the presentation, but you can go over there and touch and feel the batteries on the other side uh, after we're done. So just put this spider chart in the presentation to give you, you know, kind of the feel. It's a, you know, and all these things are a little bit subjective, but, you know, when we step back and look uh, objectively at the technologies and look at where they excel and where they still need to work. These are the type of attributes and scoring that we uh, that we give the tech give the the two different technologies. You can see the the thin plate pure lead really fills a lot of the boxes and checks a lot of the boxes as a as a advanced technology for material handling applications. And as I mentioned on the, on the lithium ion, the areas that need to continue to be focused on are the cost side to make it more competitive, uh, the safety side, it has to be safe, otherwise you just can't, you just won't use it. Uh, recycling, a lot of effort going on there. Uh, sustainability is, you know, there's still a lot of questions about that, particularly with the cobalt technologies and, and the lithium salts and, you know, are we going to be able to get all that material in the long term and do it cost effectively because uh, we can get it, but can it be done cost effectively long term? 